Hello everyone, today I wanted to make a quick guide on class selection in Elden Ring. If you follow any of my guides, this will be helpful specifically for the early game guides I make to make sure you can do my recommendations with minimal trouble. So first off, if you're playing a bleed build, my typical early game recommendation for weapon is going to be Reduvia. It has a nice special attack that allows you to apply bleed from range and can be held with a dagger to do a fast combo attack. You need arcane and dex if you're going to play bleed builds just in general, so starting off as bandit is going to be the best choice. On top of that, you also start off with a great knife which has bleed damage on it, which will be good if you're doing the dragon trick that I also recommend. Next up, if you're wanting to play a sorcerer, then you're going to want to choose astrologer. The main reason behind this is that if you're wanting to be a spell slinger, astrologer starts with Two pretty solid starting spells for the early game. The Prisoner is okay. If you wanted to do an int dex build, then I could recommend Prisoner. But the thing is, is Prisoner's spells that they start with, I think is not really all that great. It's like a delayed pebble, pretty much. It's not really too amazing. So unless you have some type of very specific build you're going for, I would recommend Astrologer if you're wanting to play Intelligence, you know, nine times uh, out of ten. So, but this will also make it to where all you need to do is find a way to get some bleed damage to do the dragon trick that I recommend. But honestly, Astrologer is one of the easier classes to start. So you can also just get the Lone Wolf Spirit Ashes, and then you could probably kill Margit very early on. Uh, the Astrologer definitely is one of the stronger early game classes. Uh, then you can move on to the better rune farming spot anyway. If you get all right at dodging, you'll be able to do this. But that being said, if you want to do... Uh, the dragon trick, you can just run around to graveyards in Limgrave to get a burst of levels so that you can kill uh, Margit using that big boost and make it easier if you are still struggling. Alright, if you want to play a faith build, I recommend playing Confessor. You do not get to start off with a damage dealing incantation, unfortunately, but you can buy one the moment you get access to the round table or if you run to Lernia and get a prayer book. So Confessor has higher dex, higher int, and higher endurance, so it has just a better stat spread overall. And typically with faith builds, you're not really just doing pure faith. A lot of the times you're trying to do like Blasphemous Blade or you're trying to do Wing Scythe or you need some type of secondary stat. So I feel that going Profit, while it does start with a damaging uh, incantation it's not really all that great so it's not like it, it, it really doesn't it really just doesn't matter all that much right you, you'll be able to get a better incantation the moment you get the godskin prayer book or the dragon cult prayer book and the dragon cult prayer book you can get just by running over and learning and killing a knight real fast and the same thing with the fire monks prayer book you can also get two fire spells and that's just found on a corpse in learning so early on you can already go and run around and get some uh, pretty solid uh, get some solid incantations without even having to kill anything other than a knight so not really a huge fan of the prophet i like the confessor overall a little bit uh better now uh i do also recommend the sword of night and flame but the thing is is there isn't really an ideal starting class for it it takes 24 int and 24 faith no matter which class you start so you're going to need to get quite a few levels to wield it. So the best thing you can do with that one is just get a boost of souls from the dragon trick. Run around, pick up souls from graveyards. If you're not familiar with that, if you run around Limgrave, you're going to have these graveyards that just have a bunch of consumable items that are going to give you runes or souls. Sorry, I use, that. I use those words interchangeably. It just means experience points, I guess, is the easiest way to put that, right? But you can get that stuff to get your decks up to 18. Then you can go get a flail over by the ruins where you first get your mount, and then you can do that. Now, another option, too, is you can use a sword that also you find in those same ruins, but you have to do an extra step where you have to go get the bloody slash. But I do believe that has a lesser requirement overall in stats in terms of how many levels you would need if you want to do that as well to get a bleed weapon in order to do that dragon trick so for strength builds i would recommend going vagabond or warrior both have good strength endurance and vitality if you're planning on using some weapons that have minor decks in them uh, you want to go vagabond but if you're just planning on wielding a great hammer i think going hero is just better because you're just gonna you pretty much have like vigor endurance and strength on hero like that's your that's your whole thing right like just go do your jump attacks go pick up the brick hammer and storm veil early on and just start jumping on people's faces you know 
Now, an honorable mention would be Samurai. So if you're playing bleed builds or strength builds, it does have three to four less strength, but uh, I guess less than Hero and Vagabond, but it starts with good endurance and vigor. And you get a bleed weapon out of the gate for the dragon trick. So all you have to do is put the first few points into strength and then you're back into you're back to like the same starting power as a hero or a vagabond, but you didn't have to go do anything in order to get that bleed weapon to do the dragon trick. So personally, I don't think Samurai's necessarily too bad, but technically the other ones would be better. Um but I think that oh, but I think that for ease of play and just so you can skip a couple steps, Samurai wouldn't be too bad. It also has a bow, so you'll be able to skip that step as well when it comes to farming the chicken uh, in the second uh, EXP farming spot that I recommend. So the rest of the starting classes are kind of meh in my opinion, unless you have a specific weapon in mind. Meteorite Katana comes to mind for Prisoner, but overall, if you stick to the ones I discussed, I think you'll have a better overall time if you're following my guides. But again. If you have specific weapons you, that you want to use, go ahead and pick whatever you want. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.